Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are returning to our discussions of various value at risk measures, and in particular, today we are going to apply the inverse Mills ratio to form a precise and quick closed form solution for the conditional VAR, the conditional value at risk that is sometimes also called expected shortfall, particularly in the Basel regulatory documents. So we'll do it, as usual, based on the example of S&P 500 returns over a five-year period. So here we have got S&P 500 daily closing index values, and we can easily calculate daily returns by just dividing the index value today by the index value yesterday and subtracting one. We can then enforce this formula for the whole sample period and get 1,258 observations of the daily returns. Then to calculate our usual variance covariance parametric normal value at risk values, we can just calculate the mean, so the average, by applying it to the whole area of returns, and the sample standard deviation. We don't need anything else apart from mean and standard deviation for the parametric value at risk for the normal distribution. Now we can proceed to calculating those value at risk values by using the usual parametric formula. We just need to use the mean, lock in the row here as we'll drag it for different confidence intervals, adding the standard deviation with the row locked as well, and multiplying it by the respective Z-stat that corresponds to a particular confidence interval. And here we can extract the Z-stat by using the normal standard inverse distribution function and inputting the confidence interval as our probability. Here the confidence interval of 0.1% corresponds to 0.1 percentile of worst case scenarios, so in other words a 99.9% .9 value at risk. So that would be the threshold of our cutoff point, and we'll see what is the loss at this percentile. If we assume the normal distribution, that is characterized by these values of mean and standard deviation. So enforcing this formula, we'll see that the corresponding loss is minus 2.58%. And if we apply it for all confidence intervals we have here, we have got them from 0.1% until 5%, so that would be a 95% VAR with an increment of 0.1%. And here we see that the greater the confidence interval, the smaller the magnitude of our loss. And here we have got it as a negative percentage point, so if we multiply minus that by your portfolio value, you will get the loss in monetary terms. That is how VR is usually reported for regulatory purposes in the disclosure. But what about the conditional VR? The value at risk only gives you an insight into what is your loss at the cutoff point. What will go on if you are somewhere at the very tail of your distribution beyond the cutoff point? What would be the expected loss, the expected shortfall that you will incur if you fall somewhere on that tail? Not on the cutoff point, but beyond that. Well, we have already discussed how to use some approximation techniques to arrive at the conditional VAR at a reasonable approximation. For example, we talked about the Monte Carlo simulation technique for conditional VAR that you can check out over here if you're interested. And the simplest technique that we covered in a different video was by just averaging over value at risks uh, with incremental confidence intervals. And uh, it is a decent technique to approximate the value of this integral that corresponds to the precise value of the value at risk. But today we're going to discuss a more precise approach, which involves the inverse mill ratio. But first of all, let's refresh in our minds what is this averaging rough approximation approach. Well, to do that, again, we have got uh, our confidence intervals at 0.1% increments. So the conditional VR for the very first uh, observation would be just the average over the exactly one observation. But the tweak is that we lock this row over here so if we bottom like it all the way down, we have got averages over more and more uh, increments of the confidence interval. It's not a perfect solution, but it's a decent enough solution if you just want to look at the expected shortfall plus or minus several basis points. And uh, we can see that in case of 5% uh, um, confidence interval, so 95% VR and CVR, 
we have got this discrepancy emerging over here. So at the fifth percentile of worst case scenarios, so for the 95% VAR, the loss would be just 1.35%, but the average loss at the 5% tail would be actually much higher, minus 1.69%, meaning that on average you lose that if you fall, unfortunately, uh, at this particular definition of a tail. But how to calculate it precisely? Well, to do that, we have to use the formula that involves the inverse Mills ratio. And the inverse Mills ratio is just the ratio between the probability density function, so small phi, and the cumulative probability function, so the probability distribution function, capital phi over here. And it only works as that for the normal distribution, because this is the expression of a conditional expectation of the normal distribution. And actually, if you think about it, the expected shortfall, the conditional VAR, is by definition nothing more, nothing less than a conditional expectation. What is the average return, or the average loss, if you fall beyond a particular value at risk threshold? So keeping that in mind, we can actually apply this formula with the inverse Mills ratio to precisely estimate the expected shortfall for a particular confidence interval. And here is how you might do it. First of all, similar to the initial value at risk calculations, we have to start with the sample mean, subtracting the standard deviation times the inverse Mills ratio, with particular cutoff points included over here as arguments of the distribution functions, either the density or the cumulative. So here we start with uh, inputting the probability density function, and we can uh, use the standard normal distribution function, norm as test, and inputting the respective z-stat here, so corresponding value at risk, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So that would be the corresponding z-stat for this value at risk threshold. And as we have got the probability density function in the numerator, the small phi, not the capital phi, we need to input zero here, as it's not a cumulative function. And then we can divide it and being lazy, copying that across and just changing the zero into a one to get the cumulative distribution function. The probability distribution function denoted capital Phi. And here we can enforce the formula using enter and bottom leg click it all the way down for all confidence intervals. And we can see how large the discrepancy is between the rough approximation of the VR using averages and the conditional VR that is calculated using the inverse Mills ratio. And it's unsurprising because by cutting off our observation at 0.1% increment, we're missing all of the extreme cases that occur further beyond. However, this discrepancy persists, albeit to lesser extent, when you go to a 5% uh, confidence interval to a 95% VR and expected shortfall. Here we see that if you estimate it properly using the inverse Mills ratio, the discrepancy is a couple of basis points. So for uh, large confidence intervals, for a 95% conditional VR, or all the more so for a 90% conditional VR, you can reasonably well use the rough approximation. However, at the very tails, the formula that uses the conditional expectation and the inverse Mills ratio performs a lot better. And that's all there is for the use of the inverse Mills ratio and the closed form solution for the expected shortfall and conditional VAR. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I may get to see any further suggestions for videos in business economics or finance you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.